I didn't murder Simon. You've got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. I'd like to speak to the lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. Stories. I've been into work. I've been 
I mean, I guess I've just been waiting, waiting to hear from you, hear from my husband. When you suspect someone of murdering their husband. She's crying, I guess. She's sad because she thought she saw her husband with another woman. But it's okay because she finds out it wasn't her husband, it was his brother. And so it's fine. sound suspicious. It's not a normal thing to do to drive to the other end of the country. I just, you know, I wanted to keep it simple. I know it was stupid not to tell you everything. Saying I spent the night in Glasgow when my husband went missing, I thought it would, you know, distract you from what was important. It's different now. Now he's... It was supposed to be a secret. Just because Simon is dead, it doesn't mean I have to give up all his secrets. It doesn't have anything to do with what happened to Simon. No one murdered my husband because he cheated his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford. Simon, Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work, mirror making, feature windows, artistic things, really beautiful things. Um, Simon is six foot. Darkish blonde hair, average build. Um, he's clean shaven. <laughs> if his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, and bought a photo instead of spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. It's the best one I have. It's the Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with, and the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games, you know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing. Simon. 
Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? My name is Hannah. H A N N A H. It's Pandre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work if you mirror it though, it's not quite symmetrical, but well, I mean, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. My name? That was the only question I failed. Your lie detector works. He saw me singing one of my shows. Pure chance. Not sure I remember what he was even doing there. Afterwards, I had a drink at the bar and he came over and we got talking. I knew who he was. Obviously I knew who he was, but he didn't know who I was. He was fascinated by the likeness. He guessed my name from letter two. <laughs> Told me it was a palindrome, but that would impress me. I enjoyed talking to him. It was amazing to be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. He didn't tell me he was married. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He later told me it was like he was dreaming. A waking dream.
Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. She recognised me from the window. She told me to come inside and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. There was a dollhouse. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place. She was a friend from when I was a kid, and she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. Yes, we'd fight. We fought on the beach once, and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under and I kept it out. And for a moment, I just wanted to kill her and watch her drown. But that was it. It was just a moment. We made up afterwards. It was a love hate relationship. Police station. Yeah, when I was young, we ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd saved money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up from the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. So my parents let me off. My mother called me Eve. My mother called me Eve. Twins. <laughs> really? Are you really our 
asking me that question. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Twins. Florence took me home with her. Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. There were always princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. We knew we were like that. Twins, magical. We were the princesses. We had a poster of Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. Had a pride of place. And underneath we used to put all our special things. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. Florence raised me in her home. I never left it. She kept me out of sight. It wasn't odd for people to see a midwife with a baby, carrying in supplies, washing nappies, that sort of thing. I never knew any different. I grew up looking out of my window and seeing her across the road. I thought it was like a reflection in the mirror. She was me. Florence was a warm, kind person. But she was broken, I guess. When I found her diary, I was a found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it, older papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story was in there. I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand. I guess I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children, planned to have a large family, but her husband died in the war. And that was back when you married for life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. Well, I mean, I guess it was different then. You know, you married for life and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. I'm, I don't know, maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. No, it was just me and her. It was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it and were going to try when it came back. Florence's family had a history of first-born girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. Mm. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember, that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread, maybe I misunderstood. 
Sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. Yes, I inherited it from my parents, so it made sense to move back, me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways before the pregnancy. Reminded me of being a girl, a dollhouse in the attic, old things. We didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. We decorated it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. Yes, I read a lot as a child and watched lots of TV. Then the doll's house we had, we still have in the attic. It's kind of a fairy castle. We used to play out there and make up our own stories. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they... We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? Yeah. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it. I mean, they wouldn't have had the money to buy it. It was so huge. It must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It is a beautiful thing. Wallpaper to scale. Little furniture. The lights work. Mirrors, beds. Big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing it, we invented all these characters and families who lived there. We wrote paperwork for them all, passports, diaries, we gave them all really elaborate stories. Once a moth got trapped in there, we'd left a light on. It was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. We ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. <laughs> Hannah had a miscarriage. This was late in the pregnancy and it left her infertile. Felt like the universe had corrected its course. We were aligned again. But Hannah and Simon were still living with his parents. They were married. Simon had a job at the Glaciers now. Eric had given him a full-time position after he left school. And then... probably had to pop out and get something, that's why I was speeding. And that wouldn't have been noted on my timesheet. But I really can't remember back to February. Can I leave? 
Are you going to arrest me? No. They'd laugh you out of the building. A lawyer would make mincemeat of you. Yes, I understand my rights. No, I don't need a lawyer. Yes, no lawyer. What are you going to arrest me for? Glaciers, but it's only for work. I can't remember the number. Oh, it's in the kitchen. I saw it plugged into its charging cradle. Yes, there's a car that we share, a Cavalier, and a van he uses for work. It's owned by Eric, but we look after it. Both of them are there now, parked in the street. I'm not sure about the keys for the van. I can look for you when I get back. No. I'm not sure what strange would be, but he hasn't been acting odd. He's been busy at work, but... Nothing too stressful. <laughs> she sent him out of the house, kicked him out, <laughs> called me up crying and I went round. I guess I had a feeling I could hear something was wrong in her voice, but I wasn't sure what it was. She called me sister on the phone. She never calls me that. Uh, when she went home, Simon had a birthday tea waiting. Afterwards, she told Simon about me, told him I was pregnant. She wanted me to move in with them, this sister he didn't know she had. She knew that instant. The look on his face. She... My sister is gone, and she's never coming back. Mum and Dad never knew what was going on. We got so good at it. We were so in sync that we'd use each other to cheat. If one of us had a hangover, the other one would go to school. Whoever was best at a subject would sit the exam. There were lots of differences between us. Some things one is better than the other at. The 
said it was food poisoning. There was something in the food they ate. My dad liked to pick mushrooms, grow them too. They said it was the mushrooms. It was hard to believe. Death caps. They have a skirt around the cap. My dad taught me that. But, I mean, the police had no reason to think it was suspicious. They lived alone. And no one had any reason to hurt them. I got in the car and I drove. I just kept driving north, just kept going, just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so tired. I just had to sleep. Yes. Um, I got to Glasgow, I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time, it must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash, just paintwork. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. But when I told him I was pregnant, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. The hospital must have details when I was looked at. There's a scratch on the car. I got pregnant. Both our parents had a big powwow. We weren't even in the room. And they decided we should get married. Yes, I'm fine. I won't be sick again. This happened some days. I'm pregnant. It's morning sickness. No. Well, yes. You found out on my birthday. I told him I was pregnant. It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. She throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel 
is reunited with the prince who's blind, but she kills him with her tears and so it's a happy ending. Is that too much? I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. We carried on living at Simon's parents until that was only a few months after. Then my parents died. It was the worst year of my life. The miscarriage and then my parents. Yeah. They got to bed feeling ill. Thinking it was flu or something. The neighbour called me, I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. And they'd been there for days, no one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage, in the worst year of my life, I'd been so happy to get married, and after that it was just like, fuck. Yeah. I, mean, I was infertile. I thought I was. They told me I was infertile after the miscarriage because of complications. my dust every week, maybe less. I once asked Eleanor how often I should dust and she said, if people ask, tell them you do it once a week, but every few weeks it's okay. I think she was just trying to make me feel better. I mean, when I was there, she was hoovering every day and it ran an ordered house. You know how that generation is putting on a brave front. Hmm. She has secret stashes of cigarettes. Doug doesn't even know she smokes. When I was there, I saw her. She has these sort of porcelain vases, ornamental, next to the Reader's Digest books. Cigarettes inside. And she still has them. I mean, last time I was there, I looked in a vase. There was a fresh pack. I mean, all those years of marriage, and she still has a secret like that. When we weren't together, we'd send secret messages by tapping out a code that we'd learned from a book, the knock code, something prisoners of war would use. We'd tap them out on radiator pipes or the attic floor.
there was a conference, something to do with double glazing. Have you not said? Are you sure? What would you be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring and he spent most of the time at the bar. An affair. Simon wasn't having an affair. You're reaching here. Oh, I don't know why. No, I've never cheated on anyone. I've never taken anything from anyone. Simon is dead. But I have my baby to care for. Why are you trying to make me sad? Why are you so obsessed with sex and affairs? You cheated on your wife. Is this your thing? What did your wife do? She didn't kill you. You think I killed Simon because he was having an affair? Well, I didn't kill him. I wasn't even there. I was in Glasgow worrying about whether my baby was still growing inside me. I mean, why would I kill Simon? I loved him. No, he doesn't have any tattoos. He has a scar down here near his stomach, past his hip. Cut himself with some glass. That was before, a long time ago. He looks just like the photo. Um, he's not got his glasses on here though. He takes them off with the camera. But he needs them to see properly, you know. He has to read a newspaper or a menu in a restaurant. Not book so much, or watching TV. He likes TV. I mean, it wasn't the present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He'd engraved the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. On his clothes, that would make sense. He made it by hand. I mean, he brushes the silver onto the glass. That's not how they make mirrors these days. I mean, he made the mirror and he gave it to me. No, I've had enough coffee for today, thanks. Glass of water.
The mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Silver leaf? No. And he normally silvers them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. So, it was Friday evening, we had an argument, he left. On Saturday he didn't come back, I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon, they had a job, but he didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at The Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning, it just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. Oh God, I don't know. I mean, I guess The Rock. You've spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. No, no one has been in the last few weeks. We had a plumber come in three, four weeks ago. Someone sang with me from the rock. He was wearing um, a shirt, with a blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch, it's a really nice one. That was a gift from his boss, Eric. Mm, he had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, black padding to bear. Uh, he would have taken that with him, it's not in the house. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a visa, a silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so he usually pays with cash, but Eric convinced him to get one. Uh, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. 
Have you met his wife, Diane? Diane is really nice. She helps out with the glaziers, organises the Christmas party, that sort of thing. They have two kids, really sweet kids. She used to look out for me when I worked there. Not really. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come over for dinner. That would be us returning the favour. Diane is a really good cook, into her trendy ingredients. And the last time Simon cooked something off Master Chef, he got the recipe off Seafax. And I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? Bruce. Oh yeah, no, it's nothing. I was going through the top cupboard in my kitchen and the chair slipped and I kind of hit the door with my face. We really hurt like hell. <laughs> the bruise. I have a really fast metabolism, so stuff like that just comes and goes. I don't know if there's much more that I can tell you that I haven't already told the other policemen. I found the body. I... If one of us got hurt, the other one would have to be hurt too. A grazed knee, a bruise. When I lost my tooth first, we had to pull our hands to match. Once, I slept with a boy who was seeing another girl. The girlfriend came up to Hannah the next day and punched her in the face, gave her a huge black eye. That night, she had to do the same to me. But she almost went too far. I couldn't see out of that eye for days. But she snuck a frozen piece up for me from the kitchen. So much of our bodies were synchronised anyway. We started our period on the same day, all our childhood diseases, stomach bugs, nits. Differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm, she is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to a bruise, pulling a tooth, a graze. 
we used a hairbrush. After that, we took it in turns, though, I was always the one who seduced the boys until Simon. This was nine, about nine. I went round and she was waiting for me. She was furious and so angry, the kind of anger you can only have towards yourself. We screamed at each other, argued, cried, we fought. I hit her back, left a bruise. I had my wig on from performing and she tore it off. Eventually we grew tired of fighting and I left. I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> we had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror. Her clothes, they're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it rather than have it linger. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch, that was my touch make sure the alibi stuck. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. We couldn't afford our own place. Simon dropped out of school, went full-time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby, if it came. It was a nice change, time to myself, living there for those months, full of hope. It was after dinner, I had spoken to Sam's parents on the phone, I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff, sad stuff, about when we lived there, about the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed and I never had the heart to throw out. I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, 
those boxes, that pile was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a torch and went straight to the back. And that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open, saw the body. I screamed and that's when I called the police. It was a shock to him. I mean, we never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it. I think it was that time, the first time, at the house, in his bed, that I got pregnant. Amazing, right? This fucking magic spell. And they say lightning doesn't strike twice. <laughs> I didn't tell him. I missed three periods. I had pretty irregular periods anyway, but three. I had always thought we were infertile. Both of us. I didn't tell him. I just waited. Hannah and I were meeting for our birthday and I told her because I thought she would be happy for us both. I think she was. upset about her argument, but I'm not sure what else he said. He likes Helen. He likes blondes. <laughs> Was he my first? No need to be so coy. No, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in a band. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. <laughs> we were 15. No. I was 15, Carl was older, 17 I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once, it was stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but those early experiences, they help you realise who's really important to you, you know? Family. Family. So, Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous, didn't want to share. Even the first date, 
We went to see Tom Cruise at the old Odeon. We both went, kept changing places in the toilet. We only had the one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. <laughs> Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me. But that was it. We didn't want another car on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules. Deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean, that's when she got pregnant. From that one time. I got a job to contribute, you know. Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. They said it didn't matter if I could cook or not, just don't poison the kids. So you see, it's always been complicated between me and Simon. It's never just been the two of us. There's always been pressure. Um, when I was eight, mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day and I left. Walked out and across the street. my thing. I've kept one, well, as long as I can remember, since I was a girl. It helps make sense of my day. And when you're forced to put something into words, it just gives you perspective. Everyone's on the same page. life. We would swap places and take it in turns to do things and we were very careful. Whoever had been out that day would come back and write a detailed diary so that we were on the same page. We had a list of rules that said what we could and couldn't do in any given situation. It was exhaustive. We lived a second life through those rules. Rules for things that could only ever happen inside our imaginations. I mean, we would consider all the permutations of future events and agree rules to walk our way through them.
the legal stuff was completed very quickly. Hand moved back in with Simon. Eric gave Simon the week off to help with the move. He decorated, modernised wallpaper curtains. Hannah insists the attic be left as it was, dollhouse and all. Simon never went up there. This other person doesn't exist. I don't know what the blonde wig is, but it could be anything. Have you looked at the cat flap? A wig? You mean, but what type of wig? Never worn a wig. What kind of wig? No. The parents decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow. So we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. Like I suddenly didn't exist. I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognised me, I started wearing a wig. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. I was trying to get pregnant, but I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers, drunk guys I'd met in clubs, in parks and alleyways. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I had a hard to look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. I wasn't in the house all of Friday night. After the argument, after Sam left, I left too. I was upset and I wanted to get away. So I took the car. The next day, Saturday, I slept for a few hours in the car. And when I woke up, I came straight back. Uh, Simon wasn't returning my calls and I wanted to try and make up. I got back to the house and Simon wasn't there. 
I mean, I, is there a bin? Yeah, I pulled over and slept in the car. This was just by the side of the road. I was exhausted. I was living in the attic. It was a very hard time. I was depressed, I was still pretty sick of the STD. When I came down one morning, they were dead. They were in bed and both had been sick. They'd thrown up a lot. And I'd slept through it. The police said it was mushrooms they ate. Dad was a mushroom expert. He used to take us picking with him and he taught us how to recognize them. And there's no way you would have picked death caps. But the police believe that's what happened. They never even looked in the attic. Thing was wrong. The bags, I, I think they were from our kitchen, you could probably check that. We're never going to the cellar. It's just a place we put things we don't need. My dad used to grow mushrooms there. The, the bags were taped up. I think it was parcel tape, but I think it was ours. Well, fine, considering. I got back into the house today, and that was weird, knowing your people have been there through my things. It's like I've been burgled. I mean, worse, obviously. I don't know. I haven't lived in the cellar yet. They sent a cleaner in, as good as new, he said. But they had to throw some stuff out. Couldn't get the blood out. And I'm still waiting to hear from the coroner so we can get a date set for the funeral. It's going to be a cremation. So. Do you need to take that few records? <laughs> Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. The blood. It's probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Like I said before, it was three, something like that. I walked in, saw Simon. He was on the floor of the living room. His throat had been cut. There was a lot of blood.
instead. She was sat behind him. She had my wig on. And she'd been there all day. And she had blood on her. And she was in shock. Okay, you got me. I'll confess, we were there. It was a dirty weekend. Simon was going to expense it, pretend it was a business trip. I used a made up name. We stayed at the hotel, had room service, didn't leave the room. Had a great view of the river and you could hear the church bells. Like you said, it was very romantic. Really? You're going to ask me about my sex life? I mean, isn't that private? Are you married? How is your sex life? So, our sex life is probably fairly average for a couple after 10 years of marriage. No! You're talking to the wrong person if you think I'm some kind of slut. If you think I'm the kind of person that would have had sex with all those guys. Childhood sweethearts. Are you my detective? No, it's okay. The other detective has just gone to get me one. Must think it's very cool that their dad is a police detective. Well, there you go. How many kids? Yeah, we were 17. It was a nice wedding, people said. Simon looked very handsome in the photos. His parents paid for everything, but he's an only child, so it was important to them. It was what they called a shotgun wedding, but if you looked at the photos, you couldn't tell. The dress was beautiful. It looked like Princess Diana's. Victorian wasn't quite as long though. There's a great photo of the bridesmaid helping to carry it out of the car. Let me see. 
Yes. I drove in here because I remember well, I went over the river. And then there was a church there. Yeah. And I probably part well, I remember seeing a street sign called Princess Street. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it must be this one. There. We were obsessed with fairy tales. Not just the pretty pretty ones, but the traditional ones. They were dark, and real, bizarre and violent. Felt like life. We had this huge old book that I think Mum must have bought from a library sale. The illustrations had thin tracing paper over them to protect them. They were in colour, shiny plates. At the front of the book was an index of illustrations. We read that more than the actual stories. We'd read aloud the captions and flip between the pictures. There was something intimate about peeling back the tracing paper and dressing the pictures. Rapunzel's hair is cut. The eagle plucks out his heart. The princess pricks her finger. when I was at school. I worked part-time in the front shop. It was sort of an extended family thing. My dad used to work there, my mom worked there before I was born. Oh, I took care of paperwork, filing, typing out invoices, that kind of thing. And it was a good job for a girl back then. I didn't work a till or anything, though. I was quite shy, so I wouldn't have liked to have worked a till. No, they were shut. Most of the windows were really hard to open anyway. They're stifling in summer. They were painted over by my dad. Could have left a door open accidentally. Oh, there's a cat flap in the back door. Mum and Dad had never had any reason to notice. They were always busy. If Hannah was eating a lot, they didn't mind. And she didn't put on any weight. That girl has a healthy appetite. Um, if they heard us talking in the attic, they just thought it was Hannah playing one of her games. And that Eve was our imaginary friend. <laughs> Once, she was already up and dressed and ready to go to school and I snuck down for a piss. Mum saw me in my underwear, she went mad. Get dressed this instant! So I ducked into our bedroom, <laughs> and seconds later, out came Hannah, dressed and ready. My mum was amazed. There's a girl and she's staring out of the window. She's sad. She's trapped. She's here. She's looking out the window because her mother won't let her out. I would have been a good mother. I was young, but I would have been a good mother. She was a girl, by the way, the baby. We were going to call her Sarah. Simon wanted to call her Ava after his nana, but I didn't want her to have a symmetrical name. Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to hear the story? 
It's a real life fairy tale. Yes, like a story, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Well, she has a knife. Uh, um, she's been cooking, I guess. She's been cooking him his favourite meal. Um, she's his wife. And he's asleep and she doesn't want to wake him because he's ill. That's why she's sad. Because he's ill and he might die. It's kind of a sad story, so I'm not sure I don't. Thanks. Please find Simon. I love him so much. No. I mean, he was... Everyone loves Simon. He was so... nice to everyone. He loves me. Cute. You must love them very much. What ages are they? I mean, what if they were crazy? You hear about these crazy people all the time. I mean, why would anyone who knew Simon want to kill him? Suicide? No. I mean, he would never do anything like that. He is not the kind of person to do anything like that. I mean, to hurt himself? No. I mean, I don't know. Something must have happened to him on his way home. He could be hurt. I mean, why hasn't he phoned? Hurt someone? Yes. But everyone thinks that from time to time, right? You just want to lash out. Simon was very moral about that sort of thing. He wouldn't just walk out there and sleep with anyone. He wasn't that kind of guy. He took his marriage very seriously.
after the kiss, the next time, he took me back to the house, to our parents' house, to their house. So, it was definitely him. I sometimes think he wanted to get caught to prove to himself that we were different people. He told me about his marriage, told me how his wife was completely different to me. <laughs> I almost burst out laughing. No, Simon wasn't seeing another woman. He has a wallet, a huge silly thing, leather, real leather, I think. He packs it full of stuff, business cards, receipts, lottery tickets. He always carries it in his back pocket. I think that's why he's got a bad back. He sets the discs. I haven't seen it, so he must have it on him. He always takes it out of his back pocket before when he comes in. If he's in the house. God, I don't know. Could be anyone. Maybe someone follows him back from the pub. But why would he let them in? Doesn't make sense. Um, I sleep from the right side of the bed as you come in from the door. You can tell because I have two pillows and he just has one. Mother wanted me to grow my hair long, but I kept cutting it myself. I wanted to look like my reflection. She always had short hair when she was little. Mother would hide the scissors, but I would find a way. Cut it with a bread knife, something like that. My reflection would always leave her house and go on adventures, but I never could. Mother taught me at home. And I had books and TV. Oh, TV was magical, but it was only on when it wanted to be, so I spent a lot of time reading books.
Yes. The first time we saw each other, it was strange. We both realised at the same moment, I think. We must have seen each other before, but there was this instant when we first realised it wasn't a reflection. The reflection was staring back. I think I was five. It was my birthday. My reflection was wearing a party hat and waving. I knew what party hats were from books. And it suddenly occurred to me, today must be my birthday. I waved back and we just spent ages waving at each other and copying each other's movements. I wanted to see my reflection. I thought that if I touched her, something would happen. We would become one, one girl. The fairy tale was over, the witch was dead, and I'd be restored to my rightful place. Birthday. Not one of the big ones, but I guess you can see that. It was my birthday, like you said. We were going to have a meal at home. We had our meal. He gave me his present. I guess I didn't like the present. From when I woke up. Okay. I, uh, I woke up, Simon was already up, and he made me birthday breakfast of Eggs Benedict. Uh, we both had to go to work, so we saved presents to later. Um, I got to work, had some birthday cake, children sang me happy birthday, then I came home. The birthday meal was a takeaway, um, and Simon gave me his present, which I didn't mind. And after that, we talked about the baby. It turned into a big argument. Simon left. I was furious. I wanted to get as far away as I could and get some space to think. So I left. Mm. Well, a week or so ago, it would have been the Saturday before my birthday. You know, I get like that on the weekends, have a lie-in, then want to get up and blitz the house. <laughs> There's no couple stuff, a stupid argument, nothing specific. No one knows how to push your buttons better than those you're close to. No. I mean, yes, we have arguments, but uh, he never runs off. He always comes back, we make up. It's always that way. Yes, he left after the argument. It was about eight o'clock. like I told you before, I drove. I took the car and drove. 
I don't have my own car, but I have a spare set of keys. I just drove north. I wanted to think, put some space between me and them. Everything I told you before is true. I stopped at Glasgow. I was tired, exhausted. I pulled out and I hit a car. My car was okay, but I was worried about the baby, so I went to A&E to get the okay. Everything was fine. I slept in the car. When I woke, I tried to call Hannah from a payphone. She wasn't answering. And then I decided to drive back. I had decided that she was more important to me than Simon. Her story is that she'd waited for him to come back. She put on my wig, some of my clothes, pretended to be me. They talked. She'd enjoyed being me. He said he wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present, another mirror just like the one he'd given her earlier. <laughs> that unique present. She went crazy, smashed the mirror. They argued, screamed. He hit her. So she grabbed a piece of the mirror and just swung it round. She cut his throat clean open. She'd only meant to scare him off. was as shy as me. I asked, well, I asked a friend to ask him out for me. We had our first date at the Odeon in North End. We went to see Risky Business. I had on my one best dress. Simon paid. He bought me a whisper and I was worried about getting chocolate on my teeth. Simon's parents offered to put me up, but I didn't think it would be a good idea. It would be too sad. Not right now. I'm staying at a friend's. <laughs> 